And we should be on. It says we are. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, Historical Lights Nightly Chat. Uh, for those of you just joining us, um, we are planning to do these every night during the quarantine time. Uh, if you follow Historical Light, you know that Historical Light is all about Masonic history. So we decided to jump on with these with 15 minutes every night, starting off with a little bit of Masonic history and then ending it with our traditional 9, 9 p.m. toast, uh, just to bring everybody together for a little bit. Brother Robert, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, Alex. Uh, things are getting pretty crazy with COVID, huh? Yeah, uh, not really sure how to call it. How's it? How's it transgressing down in your neighborhood? It's just really starting to get bad here. The hospitals are starting to get overwhelmed. Um, starting to see some pretty scary numbers that are still rising. And then that's the scary part, of course. And everyone Definitely. across the country is now is seeing the scary numbers that came out today. I think something like 700 plus deaths just today. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So... Hopefully that curve starts flattening soon. For sure. You know, I was talking to the uh, master of our lives. Hey, Justin, how you doing, brother? I was talking to the master of our lives just the other day, and uh, you know, I, he worded it very well. I had to agree with him that at least out here, you know, we're seeing the chaos, the empty store shelves and stuff. But as far as day-to-day -day life in the house, uh, we hear about it on the news. But you go outside, the weather's beautiful, people are out having a good time, and you just you don't sink into the reality of what's actually going on in the large picture. So, you know, he was sharing with me that it's, it's still hard to accept, but he has that gut feeling that, you know, something bad's coming. I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of agree. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly where this is all going. Hopefully uh, it gets. Well, you right. know what I like to do when something bad's coming? What's that? I like to crack open a cold one. <laughs> That's good advice. Good advice. <laughs> what are you going to be toasting with tonight? All right, tonight I've got a sparkling rosé, and I am actually using a uh, glass that I've never used before personally. This was my father-in-law's, got passed down to me. Um, this is, I'm not sure. If, yeah, I'm sure it's just from uh, probably the Grand Lodge session there, but uh, it's 2003, 2004, just says Grand Lodge of Kansas and has one of the Grand Masters um, custom symbols on there. But yeah, Very first time cool. I've used this, it's been up in my cabinet for a while. So looking. So I don't know about anyone else, but but for me, it was a little hard to see the logo itself. Could you describe that that Grandmaster's logo for us? Yeah, what did he so put it's, on there? Uh, it's the square and compass, and the compass has basically extra long legs on it there, and then the G <laughs> is kind of wrapped throughout it, so the G is larger oh, than the square and compass. Okay, it's got it some kind of objective. sounds like the one that uh, the Grand, Texas Grandmaster Brian Dodson used one that kind of fits that description. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's unique to him or just one he liked. Um, I've seen it before, and I just I can't recall the name of the Grandmaster right at this time, but I know he used it for his lapel pin that year as well. So uh, for my toast, uh, I've got a, a Daybreak Four Grain Breakfast Beer. A breakfast beer. Uh, this is from uh, Martin House Brewery Company in Fort Worth, Texas. Shout out to all my Fort Worth buddies, Rip Moore, uh, Greg Wright. Um, oh, my God. Uh, Gabriel. Gabriel Yagish. That's the name I was trying to think of. Hey, Gabe. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a breakfast beer. Uh, and uh, they finish it off with honey and milk sugar. It was inspired by cereal. Uh, so they use barley, wheat, a few things, different grains, and then they finish it with uh, honey and milk sugar. And of course, I do a whole uh, presentation on the Masonic history of honey and coffee. So it That's jumped right. out. Uh, and I'm going to be pouring it into this custom mug, which uh, our regular oh, historical nice. Uh, fans have seen before this was made for me by an artist in salt lake so you'll notice uh there are masonic symbols but also uh symbols of a a different organization known to headquarter in salt lake um and uh that's what i got so i'm gonna go ahead and pour it in fantastic so a breakfast beer at 10 till 9 is that late for breakfast beer or are you just getting started early <laughs> I don't sleep, Alex. There you go. You can't, right? Good historian, got to stay up. 
when I start to feel sleepy, I actually drink a cup of Busy Brew coffee. And then uh, when I'm too jittery, I have a beer and I just go back and forth. I haven't slept since January. Shameless plug on both. <laughs> well, we've got quite a few people joining in with us. Looks like we got 33 live with us right now and a whole bunch of comments coming in. Thank you all so much for uh, continuing to uh, support the mission and join in with us for a few minutes each night. Let's see who we got on here. Already said hey to Justin. We've got Mark Reeder. Good evening, brother. Uh, Scott Mead. He's a Texas guy that transplanted up here. He's a member of my lodge now. Good to see you, Scott. Brother Neil, brother Scott, brother Nathan Tweedy. What's up, man? Brother Tweedy. Rob Sensen, Brad Drew. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Well, brother Marshall, what you got to share tonight, man? What do I have sh to share tonight? Well, Alex, uh, back in the summer of 2018, uh, I took a trip to Alaska, and uh, I was actually supposed to be back in Alaska right about uh, uh, this week. Uh, I was going to be doing a road trip from Texas to Alaska, and uh, of course, COVID killed that. So I'm longing for Alaska. Uh, two years ago, while I was there, I visited uh, the Grand Lodge and about a half dozen other lodges. Uh, I visited North Pole Lodge, where it's in the charter that the Worshipful Master is required to wear a Santa hat, uh, which is technically full broom, so still fits that requirement where uh, that is necessary. Uh, and um, uh, I went to Matanuska Lodge, number seven, so uh, learned a lot about Alaska and Masonic history. Uh, currently, it is believed that uh, Freemasonry in Alaska began in the 1860s when the Grand Lodge of the state of Washington issued dispensation. Uh, and Alaska was a pretty crazy time at, or place at that time. You had uh, the Wild West had kind of started to squeeze its way up into the Northwest. And uh, even guys like Wyatt Earp went and spent time in Alaska. Uh, and of course, the gold rush and all that started to happen. Uh, Matanuska Lodge uh, has a brother named Nick Adair. Nick Adair uh, is uh, the mind behind Masonic Insights. It's a Facebook page where he He's been making memes since before that was popular in masonry. Uh, and uh, he also edits the Grand Lodge of Alaska magazine, which was the first uh, Masonic magazine to publish something I wrote. Um, and so it was really cool to get to meet him. Uh, and while I was there, I picked up a, a rather special piece. So an ulu knife is uh, a traditional uh, Alaskan native knife uh, used by, uh, I, I believe primarily by women, after men would come back in from hunts, the women would use the knife to uh, skin the animals and uh, prepare it for use. Uh, the oldest Ulu knives uh, known, I think by like, uh, anthropologists, go back at least four or 5,000 years. So they've been around a long time. Wow. Uh, I've seen one really beautiful one in the Smithsonian that has an ivory handle and the blade is made out of slate. Uh, I picked up this one. It was a fundraiser made by Matanuska Lodge. Uh, trying to get a good view of it on there. You can see they've got their, their lodge name and logo yeah. on there. And you can Fantastic. see the shape of the knife is, is unusual. You've got the handle at the top and you would hold it like this. And now they've become very popular in kitchens. People are using these to chop up all kinds of stuff in I can see uh, that. kitchens. You can, yeah. Um, so uh, that's what I've got tonight. That is fantastic, man. Now, what an I, awesome I, find. I, I mentioned that uh, uh, Alaska masonry is believed to have started in the 1860s currently. Uh, and that's because mm -hmm. uh, a fellow historian and I have teamed up. We are working on what's becoming a stronger and stronger theory that there was Masonic activity in Alaska during the time it was known as Russian America. Uh, and uh, that dates all the way back to the 1700s and even earlier, but uh, it's looking like there was some kind of Masonic activity in the late 1700s, early 1800s by Russian Freemasons, uh, which becomes very interesting uh, because uh, during that time, there was a movement by some of the leaders there uh, to start a revolution and separate 
so that Alaska would have been its own independent republic, which, of course, mm -hmm. for Masonic historians, starts to become a very familiar type of story. Indeed. Um, ultimately, it was it never came to fruition, and America bought Alaska for pennies on the dollar. Uh, go America. Uh, <laughs> But still interesting history to dig into. For sure. You know, I, I don't think most people uh, know it, but the uh, only battle that actually happened on land uh, of uh, America during World War II was in Alaska. There, were, uh, there was a successful invasion by Japan onto an island in Alaska. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So how active is uh, Freemasonry in Alaska today? I know you've uh, had the opportunity to go up there a couple times now. Uh, yeah. What's your experience been up there? It's, it's pretty active. It seems to be uh, growing in some ways. Uh, North Pole Lodge, uh, for example, they have almost reached their goal of raising funds to build a new building, uh, which, of course, nice. is kind of the opposite of the conversation happening in a lot of lodges down here in what they call the lower 48s. Right, uh, right. The uh, Grand Lodge in Anchorage uh, uh, seems to be pretty well kept and uh, pretty well uh, manned in terms of just walking in and getting a tour and that kind of stuff. Uh, one interesting thing uh, about their activity uh, turned out to be the opposite of what I had previously assumed or expected. And uh, I'll, I'll just kind of ask you, when would you guess masonry gets very active in Alaska in terms of the time of year? Uh, I mean, naturally, I'd have, I'd have to assume uh, summertime. I, I feel like wintertime just kind of shuts down, but I'm sure with the cities up there, that's probably not so much the case. So there's not much in the way of cities up there, by the way. Anchorage is, right. is pretty small itself, but... Uh, Actually, so I, I had the same I, I had the same thought, and, and reality is exactly the opposite. What happens right. is that during the winter time, everyone kind of gets uh, snowed in. They're not really able to go anywhere very far from home. Uh, they start getting cabin fever, something all Americans are probably feeling right now. <laughs> uh, and so they're just itching to go somewhere, but they can't go far. The answer is, well, I'm going to go to the lodge. And so during the winter time in Alaska, you see lots of attendants. Uh, during the summertime, they're all gone on hunting trips so that they'll have food through the winter. That's a fair point. It really yeah. is. Yeah. But it, it's that funny, like fun. you said, it's not something you would think of immediately. You'd kind of assume it to be the exact opposite there. Mm -hmm. uh, right. A couple of other things I saw there that surprised me uh, was, uh, you know, you mentioned Grandmaster logos earlier. Yeah. One Grandmaster logo was a polar bear, and it comes with a really neat story. Uh, I've got a photo of it that I can we can put out later uh, to the show one way or another. Uh, but the polar bear has his arms raised up in the air. And the story was that the Grandmaster was on a hunting trip right before he became Grandmaster uh, and saw an actual polar bear and snapped a photograph. There is a photograph of a polar bear standing up full height. These things are wow. huge uh, with his hands raised up in the air which reminded the Grandmaster of a certain posture in Freemasonry. Uh, so sure. he made that his logo. It's a, grand, a polar bear with its arms raised. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, hey, before we go too much farther, it looks like we're at 9 o'clock and 30 seconds. So before we hit 901, I want to see if uh, you'll give us our toast this evening, my brother. All right. Uh, as is happening all around the world, much more frequently than usual, but going back hundreds of years, this is a toast to the absent brethren. To the absent brethren. Cheers, brothers. Fantastic. Well, hey, while you were telling that, I see uh, Most Worshipful Darren Kellerman joined us. Uh, oh. I, so while you were out last night dealing with, uh, dealing with the family stuff you had going on, I revealed or opened up a book that Most Worshipful Kellerman sent me. And a few people have commented that I, I coughed once or twice after opening the book. When I got upstairs, man, my allergies went from zero to 100 like oh, that no. i was i was dead so i was joking with him last night i sent him a message i was i think you sent me a cursed book <laughs> <laughs> yeah i made the mistake i opened it up and there's a little bit of mold on the back side i wiped it off and 
Yeah, my allergies just went to the wall. It was insane. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Some 1906 on the book. mojo, yeah. But who else we got in here? Saw so brother Dave. Thanks for joining in, brother. Uh, he is actually well, good friend of yours. Been teaching me how to make some bread. I've got some. Uh, I guess you can call it yeast uh, working its way upstairs. So hopefully, here before too long, we'll be able to bake up some self-leavened bread. I'm excited to do that. But it's funny, all this stuff that you see uh, coming out in the uh, social media these days, people that you know haven't done this stuff forever and they're just kind of bringing it back. But looking on eBay and stuff, you can actually buy starter kits of this you know, self-leavened yeast, whatever you call it. Um, I saw one on there that was up to 800 years old. I don't know how legitimate that is, but it's insane and really cool at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw one the other day of someone that claimed to be uh, producing some kind of ancient Egyptian uh, stuff. Really? Bread. Yeah, yeah, I'll see if I can find it and send it to you. It sounded pretty cool. Very, very cool. But yeah, so yeah, I've got a couple upstairs brewing away, and uh, one of these days we'll we'll get to bake some bread out of it. But with that, I want to thank everybody again for joining us. Be sure to share this out with the hashtag time to toast. Uh, the hashtag was made by Grand Lodge of England. So we're trying to keep this movement going. As always, appreciate all of you joining us. And until tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow night, same time, 845 Central with a toast at nine. Stay safe out there. Save history. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>